Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. In today's episode I'd like to speak about something which I didn't think I'd have the opportunity to speak about, especially when it was discontinued just a few months ago or last year. And this is the FP Jean Chronometre à Résonance, and this is the 20th anniversary version in 2020. And to my mind, this is simply the finest watch I've ever had the opportunity to speak about on this channel, or indeed in an article on our website, which you can visit to see all of the, the most interesting new releases from Watches and Wonders this week, and plenty more besides. But the reason why I'd like to speak about this watch is because the innovation which has gone into this, the technology and the traditional watchmaking, puts it at the very zenith, the very pinnacle of what has been achieved by watchmakers over the last few hundred years in terms of creating something truly accurate and cleverly accurate too. This isn't a luxury watch which simply slaps a tourbillon onto a gold piece and calls it high, a high level of luxury with extremely beautiful finishing. And those things are wonderful from other brands, but from F.P. Jean you can really expect innovation, and what they've done with this Chronometre Résonance is superb. Now the basic idea behind the Chronometre Résonance, which has been present in the Calibre 1499.3 of the previous version of this watch for the last 20 years, is that if you put two balance wheels next to each other, then a certain resonance is developed between them if they're running close enough in terms of, of accuracy and so they average each other out, they balance each other, so to speak, through resonance. And this has been tested and was proven by Breguet, except with, with pocket watch design and with clocks previously, where now this is being applied to watches by F.P. Jean. And if any watchmaker could recreate this in a modern format to be used on the wrist, then Jean is really the man, considering the fact that he started his first tourbillon at only 20, completing it about five years later. And what he's achieved with this is, I think, more interesting than a lot of other complications produced by other brands and other watchmakers, because he's harnessed something which is invisible, something which you just don't see, and was only proven by his work to be absolutely certain that it would function within a wristwatch. And some changes have been made to this latest watch, but based upon this principle, you're able to create an incredibly accurate watch with the stunning image of two balance wheels in the back. Of course, in order to make this function, an enormous amount of work was needed, and after finishing his first tourbillon, Jean worked on these uh, dual balance wheel chronometers since the 1980s, and so the experience needed to create these was, was enormous. But the fact that this has been worked into a wristwatch is, is incredible. And what was produced for the last 20 years was something of a benchmark, because no other brand was really able to create a watch which purely used the resonance to connect two sides of the movement. To, uh, to keep time even better. And uh, the amount of parameters needed to be controlled to make this function was enormous, both in terms of the quality of the movement, the fact that each balance wheel, ha wheel had to be keeping time within seconds of the other one, five seconds in the case of these particular size balance wheels, in order to keep time, and also the distance between the balance wheels had to be very carefully controlled to give the perfect effect. But how do you improve upon a movement and design like that? Well, in the case of F.P. Jean, they've made the Calibre 1520, which remains a manually wound movement with the double balance wheel resonance arrangement. However, it rectifies a few things seen on the last version and improves them too in ways which I don't think anyone would have expected, but really are tangibly visible as improvements to the, the accuracy of the watch, which is, is, after all, the real reason why you would add complications to something like this. Now, firstly, there is now only one mainspring. Previously, there were two, and so now it's placed at the 12 o'clock position within the movement and is visible underneath that um, large and rather beautiful gold plate with its striping over the surface. But in the centre you see the beginning of the, dif the differentiation between these two sides of the movement, which now really are one, because in this case we have a differential which is visible through the dial, incidentally, which splits the torque between these two going trains all the way to their respective balance wheels. But then we have the really wonderful addition to this watch, and in the decoration and design of the movement you see a stunning window into the workings of this piece, because between the mainspring and the escapements with the balance wheels is one more stage, and these are two remontoires d'égalité. These are constant forces, and essentially the way these work is that they're a small spring which is loaded over a period of time, and then can release energy in a much more controlled way, in small chunks, rather than the gradual unwinding of the mainspring. 
The beauty of this is that it gives a constant force, as per the name, to the balance wheel, and so the amplitude remains the same from, the, from fully wound to empty. Of course, at a certain stage, the mainspring can no longer wind these constant forces, and on this watch it's 28 hours. So, for 28 hours of the 42-hour power reserve of this watch, it's able to use the constant forces and give you this additional accuracy, and for the last few hours it no longer uses them, but as long as you wind it up once a day, you'll be fine. Now, different brands use different lengths of energy accumulation for these constant forces, uh, or these remontoires d'égalité, and in the case of FP Jean, they've selected a one second build up, but on other watches they use five or ten seconds, depending upon the piece. But this means that you end up with an yet another level of control over the accuracy of the watch. And it's not something which is more for show than for accuracy and for function. This is a, uh, a movement complication which no one can really see, but which adds this level of accuracy to a watch which is built to deliver the finest level of chronometer to the wearer. And I think this level of excellence is, is truly wonderful to see, and is quite a rarity in the watch industry, and especially something which you can, you can perceive with such a heritage as the F.P. Jean name, as his training was in the restoration of the chronometers from the real greats of watchmaking, including Breguet, the inventor of this uh, dual balance wheel arrangement. The crowns of these watches serve several functions, with the crown which was previously found at 12 o'clock moved across to 2 o'clock, so, th so that you can adjust the time on both sides of the dial, as well as being able to wind it via this crown. On the lower crown, though, you use it as a function to synchronise the seconds on both of the subdials, and really looking at this watch with its 3 hertz beat rate, 62 joules, and incredible complication with such a stunning movement, which frankly I encourage you to simply pause the video and have a look at it, because it is just such a stunning piece, is probably the watch I've desired most in my entire time in the watch industry. It is a truly stunning watch, an incredible feat of innovation, and frankly I yearn to have one one day. Anyway though, I'll conclude this video there, but do tell me what you thought of this watch, and indeed what you think is the finest watch currently in production in the watch industry, because I'll be fascinated to hear what you have to say about this. Before you leave, do remember to like, share and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. This is Armand from WatchChronicle.com, out.